Yo, what are we looking at? This is Bitcoin's weekly chart, right? Now, we're going to talk about what not many people like to talk about. We're going to talk about the bearish outlook here. Why I think it's significant is everybody knows what the bullish outcome is. Best case scenario, ETFs get approved. The Bitcoin halvings coming up. A massive inflow of capital comes into this space through these ETFs. All these ETFs use Coinbase to purchase more Bitcoin. The price goes up. Everybody, this we understand what the bullish thesis is. What I want to talk about is the potential for a bearish outcome. Now, nobody knows what's going to happen. I'm not. This isn't a, a bearish video calling for a doomsday. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Okay. But I want to be aware of what could potentially happen here if the ETFs get rejected and we essentially go downward or sideways up until the Bitcoin halving. And then a few months after that, we might get our the bull market that everybody wants, right? But let's just talk about this. Say ETFs get rejected. What's going to happen here? Like... Do you think this is just going to stay sideways? We're probably going to get, because if you think about it, just think about basic market psychology. Like there's probably some people out here who that's, this is a trade idea for them. The trade idea is buy before the ETF approval, sell after the approval, after the initial spike. That's, that's what some people are thinking, right? These people probably have minimal due diligence on like why they should be holding Bitcoin more long term, right? But think about that. That's probably some people's outlook. Here's another outlook. Another outlook is there was people who bought at 66,000. They might be thinking if these ETFs get rejected, this could be my last opportunity to sell when I'm only down 35% and I waited this long. This is how long I've waited to get back up to 35%. I went as far down as 75%. Now I'm here. Maybe it's a good time to sell, right? That's probably what some people are thinking. I'm not saying, I'm, when I say some people, I'm talking about the average market participant who has absolutely done zero research, zero due diligence. They don't understand the charts. They just have no clue. They're literally just essentially wishing for luck. Some call it gambling, whatever. Some they're they're just trying to gamble on a random investment that they heard about. So that's what some people are thinking right now. Those two perspectives. ETF approval trade perspective, and this might be the last opportunity for me to sell my Bitcoin when I went down 75%. Now it's 35%, right? That's what we're th that's the like the average anon who's has has no idea is thinking so what that could mean for us if we look just quickly back to some of bitcoin's history it's known to have some pretty aggressive pullbacks right like over here we had a 50 percent pullback 30 percent pullback uh, i'm only really going to count the bull markets um, right here 51 percent pullback right here 60% pullback and that was really quick. That's four weeks of straight down um, right here 18% pullback 30% uh, pullback, right? Let's just say the average is 30 to 40% pullback. Let's just be generous from these levels that we're currently at if we go back 40% that brings us to a pretty prominent area in the chart, right? We have major support in this area. Major support in this area. That's a pretty significant area. Let's keep that marked out just in case. Um, this, if we, I, I mean, again, look at this zone, 25,000. I highly doubt we'll come back to 25,000. Imagine the gift that would be to be able to get more Bitcoin at 25,000 if you're thinking long term. 
good to point out. All right, now the next zone here is this major support level that we happen to hang around a lot of 2021, part of 2022, and we haven't really had any confluence back in this zone. We kind of glided right through that, and that's from the 34 to 38 thousand dollar zone. Um, what happens if we get a correction down to this zone? That right there would be a 15% correction from here, 15 to 20%. That seems possible, right? Nobody knows what's going to happen. And in fact, if you look at the two day time frame, you could argue that there's some bearish divergence, right? Again, I'm not a bear, but I want to look at both perspectives here. So you could argue, you know, there's some bearish divergence in the chart um, that could lead us to a pullback. Um, if we're talking technical perspective, um, the news again, everyone knows the news that would give us a pullback. It's are these ETFs going to get rejected? So I think having this on the chart is great to be aware of just in case things happen. We retest that zone. Furthermore, right, if we're looking at Bitcoin and we're thinking long term, what could we be looking at? Right. Well, maybe there's some sort of a inverse head and shoulders being set up right now where we have the left shoulder here. We have the head and we have this potentially developing another right shoulder where we get sideways price action for a bit before we continue higher. I mean, it would make sense from a technical perspective. We have this low, high, higher, low higher high, higher low, then we continue. It would make sense, right? These are just a few things. And again, this is a pretty prominent area. You could call this the neckline potentially right around here. Who knows? Again, these are just ideas I'm pointing out to be aware of in case we have to prepare for a pullback half of 2022 or three months into 2022. 2024 sorry I said 2022 that's crazy this is kind of like my bearish outlook and my bearish perspective um, that's what I would be waiting for if these ETFs get disapproved but then again who knows what's gonna happen maybe they get rejected and the price goes up for some reason <laughs> nobody knows what's gonna happen uh, that's kind of the breakdown and outlook here for you guys easy <laughs>